think uh, one of the main challenges I think that we found uh, out here is the whole situation where nobody kind of scouted our location uh, and we we had difficult like in most kind of a TV shows where you see kind of survival related things uh, there's plenty of uh, creatures around to be able to, to be killed and they can be killed uh, that's one problem that we've faced out here what do you think about it yeah um when we were looking into locations, our main sort of worry was water, wasn't it? Yeah. And actually, this this location we've been fairly lucky in the sense that we found very lucky, yeah. The stream, but we always thought that where there's water, there'd be wildlife. Yeah. Um, and we were completely wrong with that. Yeah. Um, it's quite a dead forest. In in many ways, obviously it's very alive, but there's quite a lot of dead wood uh, around. I don't know if that makes much of a difference, but you know. We haven't seen too many uh, creatures along the floor. Uh, we see a few birds, very small birds, but we don't see uh, too many creatures. Yeah, like we've seen the odd lizard now and again. Like in the distance, yeah. Like I've eaten one lizard, a small lizard, that was it. Uh, that but was yeah, the other yeah, but that was at a different location. Uh, yeah, so that's been quite a bit of a challenge, obviously, having not having that protein source, which is you know on the ground, like a like a reptile. Or anything along those lines. We you know we haven't even seen like rats, uh, which I was hoping at a bare minimum you'd be able to make deadfall traps yep. and uh, be able to catch them. But uh, that's something which we haven't had the opportunity to do out here because you know we we found this location on Google Earth. Yep. Like all our because re- because we aren't able to fly out to a place beforehand. But like all our like research is Google Earth, yeah. really, um, and that is very inaccurate and it doesn't really show you enough detail even nearly enough detail we had to after the first two days of, of our first journey yeah with that going not as what we planned it to be and for the terrain not to be what it was you know we had to come up with a alternative location on very quick notice mm. and to find this we've done well in a sense but it hasn't delivered everything yeah. that we were hoping to produce on camera yeah um, in terms of you know being able to hunt capture stuff, cook, you know, and actually thrive out here instead of just getting by day to day. And just surviving, yeah. what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. But the thing is, there's no way for us to have known where there'd be creatures anywhere in different kind of, like, rainforests or anything like that. It's all just potluck. But the main thing that we have got is water. Yeah. And that's the most key thing, which I'm happy about. I think that's a very big success within itself. Yeah, if we didn't have the water, uh, I don't think we'd be here. Mm. I think the whole sort of um, journey would have been cut cut very short. Um, you know, the water's been very drinkable, which is why it's so surprising that there's no sort of fish or anything like that. Exactly, or more creatures, because it's clearly drinkable. If it's drinkable for humans, if it's potable for humans, it's going to be potable for cre- all kinds of creatures. But, you know, we haven't seen that around here, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and kind of one thing thing that we uh yeah so one thing that we thought we would find, obviously being next to like a river, we'd be able to fish. Uh, we didn't really find that the case. Uh, well, we haven't necessarily seen any fish in there, but I'm guessing there is fish in there, as you know rivers will have. Uh, you know, as you said, there's not many kind of birds preying on those fish. So like, where are the fish? Is that sense? But I think uh, one of the issues is that. You know, we changed our location because we, we we had our gear set for one certain location, which is like a lake type situation, and we've had to change that to a different location. Uh, in the lake in the lake situation, we would have camped very near to the lake, and been able to fish out there actively. Uh, but being so far away from the river and having to make it a certain trek, burning certain calories, uh, we've had to essentially uh, be more passive in our fishing technique. And that meant uh, using, you know, safety pins, you know, that was from our medical kit. Uh, it's very much improvised because the idea of this whole survival was not to take out too much equipment. But we had the safety pins and we had some fishing line. Uh, that didn't work because, you know, if a fish does get caught on it, then they are going to be able to escape very easily. It takes not much effort. Even a worm could escape that. And, you know, a fish is a lot bigger, a lot stronger, you know. Uh, all our bait did disappear. So... You know, I said, but I, I, I double and triple put the bait on 
so that the worms or the crickets wouldn't be able to move or like the larvae wouldn't be able to go and get off because there's too many points of contact going through its body. But yeah, that was an issue that we faced. Yeah. The thing is, you know, we're out here to prove, you know, can survival be done by two ordinary people? Yep. Uh, you know, survival's quite, you know, the whole survival genre is quite big on TV. Uh, and we want to see if two ordinary people can do that. And, you know, we've proven that it can be done. Yeah. It can definitely be done. You know, it's not, once you kind of get your basics in, a lot of it is the mental power of yourselves and, you know, keeping yourself a spirit up high. I know you've definitely kept my spirit up high through a lot of this. Yeah. Doing it alone would be very difficult because of the issue with time and not having any kind of companionship. But, yeah, what do you think? Yeah, like, it's just about counting down every day. Like, you know, for me, I've, you know, I, I, like, I like to work things out in percentages. Like, yeah. You know, each day is another five percent of the uh, journey done. Yeah. You know, so after today, we've only got twenty-five percent left. Exactly. Of the whole thing to do. You know, um, it's about you know, it's given you, a, it's given me a lot of time to think. You know, yeah. It's given both of us a lot of time to think. That career, like what you want to yeah. do afterwards. You know, and also. Um, you know, like, I don't know, it's, you know, trying to fill the day, like, you know, I think we've spoken about movies non-stop for two weeks, you know, yeah. and it's hard to, feel, it's hard to food. keep on talking about the same thing, you know, like, my feelings of food have changed in, in the sense that, you know, a few days ago, for the last few days, or well, a few days ago, essentially, uh, food was all I could imagine when I can get out, essentially. But now it's got, I've, kind of, I've kind of gone past food because we've talked about it so much. Yeah. It's now like a, not a thing I even care to talk about because it's been talked about. And I know it's going to come. But my kind of more motivation now is just to see my friends and see people who I work with because, you know, I'll go back to work on the same day yeah. I actually land. But, uh, yeah, just like food has become less and less important because it's just been over-talked, I think. Yeah, and we will, it will come, like, you know, mm. We know it's gonna come, yeah. Away from, from feasting, and boy, will we feast. Yeah. Um, you know, and it it will. It's slow. It's slowly getting within our grasp. You know, obviously, there's there's certain foods that I want to eat when I get home. Nando's being one of the big ones. Mm. Um, and Mexican. Uh, yeah, man. I just it's just counting down the sleeps. The sleeps are still the hardest thing for me, man. Yeah. Um. You know, last night was tough. I think I've been bitten now more yesterday than I have sort of any other day that I've been out here. So mm. sleeping last night was very tough. Um, you know, it's, it's warm at one stage and then the next minute it's cold. So, mm. yeah, it would be nice to get more than sort of an hour on a go or yeah. sleep at any one time. But, you know... We're not too far away from being in a nice, comfy hotel bed. So exactly. That's what we've got to think about. Like, time is kind of a big issue, but, you know, I feel very content in what we've achieved, you know. We wanted to at least do two weeks out mm. in the wild, at least two weeks, and we're almost up to the two-week mark yep. uh, in, in our second location because we did two days in our first location. Uh, and we're hope, hopefully going to hit maybe 18, 19 days in our second location, yep. and then overall a good maybe 21 days. But, yeah, we've definitely, like exceeded our kind of our targets that we wanted to hit so yeah feel very proud about that yeah man because you know last week i was feeling really down when i didn't have no sleep it was cold i was kept feeling my body temperature was not where it mm. needed to be and i was quite close to you know calling it a day and you know mm. walking away from the whole project but no i'm still here plowed through you know and, you know, don't have that long left to go. And, you know, I can see the finish line now. There's, there's no point giving up now. Mm. So I'm quite quite pleased in myself that, 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 that I had the drive to, you know, stick with it. Yeah, exactly. You know, often, you know, with time being a kind of enemy sometimes, because we have so much of it, you know, the last 100 metres can sometimes be the hardest yeah. uh, because it's so close in your grasp and you're kind of almost just waiting yeah. uh, for that time to come, essentially. Yeah. Uh, yeah, another issue we've faced out here is, uh, 
you know, obviously we haven't had too many calories, but you know, we've been kind of fine-ish. Uh, it's obviously healing, uh, kind of healing wounds and injuries, you know, without that kind of calories, without those nutrients and those vitamins and those minerals. If you want to kind of see my hand, uh, it should be healing a lot faster than this if it was, if we were out uh, in like, you know, just the regular world. But it's taken a long, long time to heal. Yeah, it's just taking a long, long time to heal because we haven't got that kind of fuel uh, to be able to do that. Uh, my knee as well, which should have been a simple like two, three, four day injury, has gone on this whole time. It happened on the first night and it's still uh, an issue. So, uh, yeah, it's just like injuries take a long, long time to heal when you're not eating enough food. Yeah. But, you know, we are trimming down, getting, in, getting into really good shape. <laughs> you know, getting into really good shape, you know, it's not... You know, uh, I haven't... Getting into A-shape. <laughs> yeah, getting into A-shape or anything like that. But, yeah, like, you know, the weight loss hasn't been an issue at all. You know, obviously it happens, but, you know, it leaves you in better shape, hung, essentially. hunger hasn't been a massive, massive issue either. Mm. Right? You know, we sort of expected... I expected there to be, like, sort of stomach pains and, you know, hunger, you know, absolute, you know... You know, being a killer, like, you know, where, where I need food, I need food. But it hasn't been like that at all. It's actually been quite surprising yeah. that, you know, you wake up, you know, that we can still go to sleep feeling hungry, you know. Yeah. Hunger hunger is just at the back of your mind, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how do you think you've changed from this whole kind of process so far? Because we are getting near to the end. Um... I think I think I've don't think I've changed massively, but um, I think I've realised that I'm a bit a bit more determined, a bit more. I've got a stronger sort of willpower. A stronger willpower than your people didn't expect you desire, to get so far. Yeah, desire than mm. one than what people than what pe I let people clock on to. And two, you know, I, I've surprised myself. You know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you definitely know? surprised me. Oh. You've been driving. So you've got that kind of motivation and that kind of like, you know, that and gumption. And the positivity, like, how positive I have been throughout the whole thing. Yeah. You know, there have been times when it's got me down a little bit, but, you know, I always try and keep a positive attitude. And the old PMA, as yeah, they say. Yeah, PMA, positive mental attitude. Exactly. And that's, I think, been the big thing that's got me through this, is my yeah. driving force and, uh, and the positivity. Yeah. What about you? Exactly. Well, I guess we know. Obviously, you know, like tough times don't last, but tough people do. Mm -hmm. So you know things are always going to end. But as long as you're tough, you're going to always, pretty much always, like outweather yeah. uh, any kind of storm that comes along. Uh, with me, I was kind of surprised. Like I knew I was able to do this, but I didn't know the kind of the level of, you know, how the whole not needing food, the whole level of being able just to sustain, being able to sustain on nothing. I don't mean just uh, based on calories, sustaining on barely anything, but more s being able just to sustain out here mentally is very difficult. I think that's a quite a hard achievement to do. And being able to put yourself through a very difficult situation and come out the other side, you know, stronger, essentially. Mm, definitely. What about, what about our friendship? Do you reckon? Do you reckon that's changed? Yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's changed too much. I think, uh, yeah, in terms of it, you know, we want to get a uh, tattoo to uh, commemorate it. Essentially, just yeah. get a nice uh, commemoration yeah. uh, just to see that. Uh, yeah, in terms of our friendship, obviously now know how tough you are as a person. Yeah. Because uh, obviously before, you know, everyone knows you. You know, you like to go out. You know that kind of stuff. <laughs> Always out there for a laugh. But like really, there's there's some there's somebody ten times stronger yeah. inside you that you know n people didn't really know existed until you kind of put into that situation. Yeah. Nobody's gonna know, and obviously in the normal world, you're never gonna be put into that situation where you have to do that. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. But yeah, I think I think you know, in a way we've got 
naturally growing closer yeah through, throughout the whole experience you know from the planning stage right right the way up till to this mm. um you know and i've seen seen a different side of dan mm. know, like more of a leadership yeah type type of dan like you know you you, you know when in our circle of friends you're quite a sort of laid back yeah guy you know not really don't care about plans too much doesn't care about plans you know sort of does knows what he wants and does what he wants yeah but you know i've definitely got a headstrong like at times i could be headstrong and be like very uh have a quick fuse in terms of just like being a bit snappy sometimes which i'm sorry about but yeah that's something which i can do sometimes uh well only in this situation like in you know because this is a situation that i care about Mm. but like you know going out and stuff like that in England or London yeah. it's not really something which you're invested in so it's not something which I yeah. you know just, I'm, just, I'm just laid out like just laid back about to us outside of here but like in here there's just so much kind of going on and a lot of pressure to get things done because obviously it's taken a lot of planning mm-hmm. a lot of money and a lot of time and yeah. like we want to kind of make a success out of what we do yeah uh, yeah So what what kind of things do you miss the most from home? From home? Yeah. Just um football. Yeah. Big thing. Like, you know, knowing how Southampton football club and then Yeah. You know, that's food, obviously. Um just the fact that, you know, there's no variety here, is there? It's like you wake up, you survive. I've got my routine. I go down and I do. I collect the water. Mm. Spend most probably half hour by myself. Yeah. Down collecting the water. You know, just thinking about the day, thinking about the previous day, trying to get myself into that positive. Bit of personal period. time. Yeah, bit, of, bit of bit of you know your own fortress of solitude. Yeah, and that's where I've done most of my thinking. And but you know, back at home there's a v- variety. You know, the fact that you know if you wanna sit there and it's, watch a little bit of telly it's input there's so much like yeah. yeah there's so much like things coming at you you know so many options of what to do yeah you it, know things trying to grab everything's trying to grab your attention at home isn't it essentially like I'm, the tv screaming out the laptop screen screaming out the wi-fi your phone it's yeah. all kind of like screaming out at you essentially but i do like the base like you know part of this like you know um more basic living you know where money isn't a thing you know where yeah the freedom of yeah. you know we're limited by what's around us but we've got the food nobody's like telling us to wake up at this time or go bed at this time we go by however the night sky is if it's getting dark we go to bed if it's getting light we get up yeah uh, that so kind of freedom going back to what you know we as human beings like when we first sort of you know progressed along evolution mm. you know what we were like um, as species but you know it's you know, I don't miss the sort of, you know, spending money. I've, I've actually enjoyed not spending money. Exactly. Um, and But I have missed, you know, you know, we miss like, but we're cut off, we're completely cut off. The only person I've spoken to for two weeks is you. Exactly. And it's the you interaction you miss, yeah. The world has something major happened, has... Mm something major happened in my own family life exactly you know, there'd be literally no way to know you know and that's you know that's that's the thing is being this cut off you know for too long is it, I think it plays on your mental mind yeah yeah and I think things I think the out what happens in the outside world is playing on my mind I just want to get back there as yeah. in terms of you know having an interaction with all your friends and yeah. your family that kind of stuff just to kind of get back to like a normal routine because uh, you know we knew coming out here we had a certain amount of days we could be out here you know we flew out on the 28th uh, we leave on the 21st yep. but obviously we have to be out the uh, rain first uh, the day before because you know the flights are the next day so yeah. we need to be out there and just be able to uh, check ourselves back up and kind of uh, eat some food before we get on a flight but yeah like that stuff doesn't play my mind a lot of it just you know the food and uh, mostly I think it's just the life in England of uh, being able just to sit down on a couch, not being bitten by bugs. Yeah, that would be nice. That would be a bit of a dream, not having bugs biting you non-stop. Yeah, you know, and having, you know, 
know, some food, some variety in what, what you drink, you know. Mm. Nice cold beer might be nice for, yeah. at the end of this. Um, yeah. Apart from that, no. Mm. Have you been finding out like, the blackouts? I know we've both been... Uh, no. right. Have you been finding out like, finding the uh, blackouts? I know we've both been kind of facing those. How's that been affecting you? Um, it's, it's affected you a lot more than it's affected me. So yeah. I think that's because I've still got a lot, lot of body fat to burn. Yeah. Still got a lot of energy that, that uh, you know... Stored in your body. Yeah. I've got a lot more energy than you have. Yeah. So I, I, get, I get them every now and again. Um, yeah, but I just qu- try and keep hydrated. It's more, you know, how how you're coping with them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's very, definitely affected me in a sense that, you know, I started off quite light and I get kind of get more and more. Uh, it lasts longer, and uh, also kind of the audio, the sounds of like the vein fires kind of like slowly mute down, mute down, mute down, mute down, and then as it kind of the blackout kind of fades back out into like normal vision. It kind of goes, the audio kind of returns at that point. This is obviously a new experience, but like, yeah, the blackouts are a thing, but they don't affect me other than within those, you know, five, ten seconds. You know, it's just a temporary thing that kind of happens. You deal with it, you carry on. But a lot of it is just from standing up, you know, too quickly. You just got to give yourself a bit of time when you stand up. Well, personally, for me, uh, stand up and, uh, you know, take a bit of time just to accept the blackout and then con- you know continue it doesn't affect me for the rest of the day you know there's no other symptoms to it. obviously it's just down to a lack of uh, energy a lack of food a lack of sustenance uh, that's what it's caused down to so it's not like an issue really it's, it's a very it's a very easy symptom a minor symptom in my opinion uh, to the whole kind of lack of food situation Uh, have you been finding like the bug bites? Oh mate, um, the bug bites um, took a while to get used to in the first week, mm. yeah, and then they sort of died down, and then over the last few days, I've gone crazy again. Mm. Man. You know, I don't know whether it's something to do with the weather. Um, is it something you know we, we washed like properly yesterday, like down in the stream? Is it something to do with that? Is it to do with the shower? But Last night, I think last night I got bitten more than I've been any other day mm. since I've been here. And it's, you know, there's always something to scratch. And I'm starting to come up with just, my body looks and Scars, things, yeah. Yeah, through through just scratching. Yeah. And, but there's not a lot I can do about it. You know, we don't have any insect repellent. We don't yeah. have anything. Too easy, wasn't it? If you took an insect yeah. repellent, that's, that's not really survival, is it? You don't really yeah. carry that around like 24-7. Yeah. But it's something you should kind of deal with. It's one of the most annoying things about it. Uh, it's, been, it's it's made sleep a lot more difficult. You know? Yeah, it makes sleep very difficult. Um, but no, like it's just something that you've had to kind of it's become everyday life a little mm. bit. To be fair, you know you're gonna you're gonna get bitten, you're gonna get scratched, you know, you're gonna end up scratching, you know. Yeah. And that's one of the, the like as soon as we're out, I'm gonna look forward to you know bites going away. Like I've just been bitten there. Mm. Um, you know, so I'm looking forward to getting away from the insects. To be fair. Oh yeah, that'd be fun. Uh, don't just stand up and just, uh, give a quick twirl. So as you can see, on his back. So obviously we had loads of bug bites, which come out as little like red marks. Uh, but now more and more as time's gone on, we've kind of got more kind of scarring and kind of uh, because we've been kind of you know, scratching our bug bites, which is ble- which is piercing our skin, making it scar up quite badly, as you can see right there. Kind of all over. Let's just turn it, let's go back around to the back. You know, lower back. The back's quite a big uh, area, because obviously it's a place where you can't reach the bugs as uh, well. I don't know. So I'll uh, look. How does it look? A lot of bites. So like Dan's got a lot of bites, a lot of scratches, a lot of scars. You know, um, his arm. Show me your your your, your left arm. Got no blood there from scratching too much. Yeah. Just like all over. A big effect. But yeah, something which we, it's like bug bites. Something which you have to deal with, but it's not pleasant and it's it's constant. It makes it hard to sleep. 
but you know, uh, I find as well, uh, it's easier to sleep when, you, when you're able to kind of share a bit more body heat, I think. Yeah. I feel like the, the cold does keep you awake more and it makes it hard to get to sleep. Yeah. But so like sometimes when it gets to maybe, um, what I'm guessing is maybe two in the morning when it's probably at its coldest, you kind of just have to like sleep a bit closer to each other. Yeah, like uh, back to back, you know? Exactly, just to be able to just like get a bit more, just to get like that bit more body heat, just to get a, like, just a slight more warmth. It's not going to change the world in warmth, but it definitely makes a difference when you kind of, you can feel heat uh not just being generated from your own center of your body but maybe from somebody else's yeah no definitely yeah it's a little bit a little bit comforting as well yeah you know because sometimes it can be raining yeah um
Yeah, okay, so I think uh, one of the main challenges I think that we found uh, out here is the whole situation where nobody kind of scouted our location uh, and we read difficult, like in most kind of the TV shows where you see kind of survival related things, uh, there's plenty of uh, creatures around to be able to be killed and they can be killed. Uh, that's one problem that we've faced out here. What do you think about it? Yeah. Because um, when, when we were looking into locations, our main sort of worry was water, wasn't it? Yeah. And actually, this this location we've been fairly lucky in the sense that we found very lucky, yeah. The stream, but we always thought that where there's water, there'd be wildlife. Yeah. Um, and we were completely wrong with that. Yeah. Um, it's quite a dead forest. It's in, in many ways, obviously, it's very alive, but there's quite a lot of dead wood. Uh, around. I don't know if that makes much of a difference, but you know, we haven't seen too many uh, creatures along the floor. Uh, we see a few birds, very small birds, but we don't see uh, too many creatures. Yeah, like we've seen the odd lizard now and again. Like in the distance, yeah. Like I've eaten one lizard, a small lizard, that was it. Uh, that but was yeah, in the other location. Yeah, but that was at a different location. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's been quite a bit of a challenge, obviously, having, not having that protein source, which is, you know, on the ground, like a like a reptile or anything along those lines. You know, we haven't even seen like rats, uh, which I was hoping that at bare minimum you'd be able to make deadfall traps yeah. and uh, be able to catch them. But uh, that's something which we haven't had the opportunity to do out here because you know we we found this location on Google Earth. Yeah. Like all our because of because we aren't able to fly out to a place beforehand. But, like all our like research is Google Earth. Yeah. Really. Um, and that is very inaccurate and it doesn't really show you enough detail, even nearly enough detail. We had to, after the first two days of, of our first journey, yeah. with that going not as what we planned it to be, and for the terrain not to be what it was, you know, we had to come up with an alternative location on very quick notice. Mm. And to find this, we've done well in a sense, but it hasn't delivered everything yeah. that we were hoping to produce on camera. Yeah. Um, in terms of, you know, being able to hunt, capture stuff, cook, you know, and actually thrive out here instead of just getting by day to day and just surviving, yeah. what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, I guess so, but the thing is, there's no way for us to have known where there'd be creatures anywhere in different kind of like rainforests or anything like that. Mm. It's all just pot luck, but the main thing that we have got is water, yeah. and that's the most key thing which I'm happy about. I think that's a very big success within itself. Yeah, if we didn't have the water, uh, I don't think we'd be here. Mm. I think the whole sort of um, journey would have been cut cut very short. Um, you know, the water's been very drinkable, which is why it's so surprising that there's no sort of fish or anything like that. Exactly, or more creatures, because it's clearly drinkable. If it's drinkable for humans, if it's potable for humans, it's going to be potable for all kinds of creatures as well. You know, we haven't seen that around here, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and kind of one thing thing that we uh, yeah, so one thing that we thought we would find, obviously being next to like a river, we'd be able to fish. Uh, we didn't really find that the case. Uh, well, we haven't necessarily seen any fish in there, but I'm guessing there is fish in there, as you know, rivers will have. Uh, you know, as you said, there's not many kind of birds preying on those fish, so like where are the fish in that sense? But I think uh, one of the issues is that. You know, we changed our location because we, we, we had our gear set for one certain location. It was like a lake type situation. And we've had to change that to a different location. Uh, in, the lake, in the lake situation, we would have camped very near to the lake and been able to fish out there actively. Uh, but being so far away from the river and having to make it a certain trek, burning certain calories, uh, we've had to essentially uh, be more passive in our fishing technique. And that meant uh, using, you know, safety pins, you know, that was from our medical kit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very much improvised because the idea of this whole survival was not to take out too much equipment. But we had the safety pins and we had some fishing line. Uh, that didn't work because, you know, if a fish does get caught on it, then they are going to be able to escape very easily. It takes not much effort, even a worm could escape that. And, you know, a fish is a lot bigger, a lot stronger, you know. Uh, all our bait did disappear. So... You know, yeah. I said, but I, I, I double and triple put the bait on so that 
the worms or the crickets wouldn't be able to move or like the larvae wouldn't be able to kind of get off because there's too many points of contact going through its body. But yeah, that was an issue that we faced. Yeah. The thing is, you know, we're out here to prove, you know, can survival be done by two ordinary people? Yep. Uh, you know, survival is quite, you know, the whole survival genre is quite big on TV. Uh, and we want to see if two ordinary people can do that. And, you know, we've proven that it can be done. Yeah. It can definitely be done. You know, it's not, once you kind of get your basics in, a lot of it is the mental power of yourselves and, you know, keeping yourself a spiritual high. I know you've definitely kept my spirit to high through a lot of this. Yeah, Doing yeah, it alone yeah. would be very difficult because of the issue with time and not having any kind of companionship. But yeah, what do you think? Yeah, like, it's just about counting down every day. Like, you know, for me, I, you know, I, I, like, I like to work things out in percentages. Like, yeah. You know, each day is another 5% of the uh, journey done. Yeah. You know, so. After today, we've only got 25% left. Exactly. Of the whole thing to do, you know, um, it's about you know, it's given you, a, it's given me a lot of time to think, you know. Yeah. It's given both of us a lot of time to think. That fear, like what you want to yeah. do afterwards. You know, and also, um, you know, like I don't know, it's you know, trying to fill the day, like you know, I think we've spoken about movies non-stop. For two weeks, you know, yeah. and it's hard to put, it's hard to and food. keep on talking about the same thing, you know. Like, my feelings of food have changed in the sense that, you know, a few days ago, for the last few days, or for a few days ago, essentially, uh, food was all I can imagine when I can get out, essentially. But now it's got, I've, kind of, I've kind of gone past food because we talked about it so much. Yeah. It's now like a, not a thing I even care to talk about because it's been talked about, and I know it's going to come. But my kind of more motivation now is to see my friends and see the people who I work with because you know, I'll go back to work on the same day and yeah. actually land. But uh, yeah, just like food has become less and less important because it's just been over talked, I think. Yeah, and we, we, it will come. Like, you know, yeah. we're only we know it's going to come. Five yeah. days away from, from feasting, and boy, will we fish. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, it will. It's, slow, it's slowly getting within our grasp. You know, obviously there's, there's certain foods that I want to eat when I get home. Nando's being one of the big ones. Yeah. Um, and Mexican. Uh, yeah, man. I just, it's just counting down the sleeps. The sleeps are still the hardest thing for me, man. Yeah. Um, you know, last night was tough. I think I've been bitten now more yesterday than I have sort of any other day that I've been out here. So mm. sleeping last night was very tough. Um, you know, it's warm at one stage and then the next minute it's cold. So yeah, it'd be nice to get more than sort of an hour on a go of yeah. sleep at any one time. But you know, we're not too far away from being in a nice, comfy hotel bed. So exactly. That's what we've got to think about. Like time is kind of a big issue, but you know, I feel very content in what we've achieved. You know. We wanted to at least do two weeks out mm. in the wild, at least two weeks, and we're almost up to the two-week mark yep. uh, in, in our second location, because we did two days in our first location, uh, and we're hope, hopefully going to hit maybe 18, 19 days in our second location, yep. and overall a good maybe 21 days. But yeah, we've definitely like s exceeded our kind of our targets that we wanted to hit. So yeah, we feel very proud about that. Yeah, man, because, you know, Last week I was feeling really down when I didn't have no sleep, it was cold, I was kept feeling my body temperature was not where it needed to be and I was quite close to, you know, calling it a day and, you know, yeah. walking away from the whole project, but, you know, I'm still here, plowed through, you know, and, you know, don't have that long left to go and, you know, I can see the finish line now, there's no point giving up now, mm. so I'm quite quite pleased in myself than that that I had the drive to, you know, stick with it. Exactly, you know, often, you know, with time being our kind of enemy sometimes, because we have so much of it, you know, the last hundred metres can sometimes be the hardest. Yeah. Uh, because it's so close in your grasp and you're kind of almost waiting yeah. uh, for that time to come essentially. Yeah. Uh, yeah, another issue we faced out here is uh 
you know, obviously we haven't had too many calories, but you know, we've been kind of fine ish. Uh, it's obviously healing, uh, kind of healing wounds and injuries, you know, without that kind of calories, like those nutrients and those vitamins and those minerals. If you want to kind of see my hand, uh, it should be healing a lot faster than this if, it was, if we were out uh, in, like, you know, just the regular world. But it's taken a long, long time to heal. It's taken a long, long time to heal because we haven't got that kind of fuel uh, to be able to do that. Uh, my knee as well, which should have been a simple like two, three, four day injury, has gone on this whole time. It happened on the first night and it's still uh, an issue. So, uh, yeah, it's just like injuries take a long, long time to heal when you're not eating enough food. Yeah. But, you know, we are trimming down, getting, in, getting into really good shape. <laughs> you know, getting into really good shape, you know, it's nothing. You know, uh, I haven't... Getting into A-shape. <laughs> yeah, getting into A-shape or anything like that. But yeah, like, you know, the weight loss hasn't been an issue at all. You know, obviously it happens. But, you know, it leaves you in better shape, the essentially. The hunger hasn't been a massive, massive issue either. Yeah. Like, you know, we sort of expected... I expected there to be, like, sort of stomach pains and, you know, like hunger. You know, absolute... You know, being a killer, like, you know, where, where I need food, I need food, but it hasn't been like that at all. It's actually been quite surprising that, you know, you wake up, you know, it would be still go to sleep, feeling hungry, you know. Mm. And the hunger, hunger is just at the back of your mind, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so how do you think you've changed from yourself, kind of process so far? You are getting near to the end. Um... No, I think I think I've, I don't think I've changed massively, but um, I think I've realised that I'm a bit, a bit more determined, a bit more. I've got a stronger sort of willpower. Stronger willpower than drive, people didn't expect you desire, to get so far. Yeah, the desire than mm. one than what people than what pe I let people talk on to, and two, you know, I, I've surprised myself, you know. Yeah, definitely, yeah. You know, surprised me. Oh. You've been driving. You've got a kind of motivation and that kind of like, you know, like and gumption. And the positivity, like, how positive I've been throughout the whole thing. Yeah. You know, there have been times when it's got me down a little bit, but, you know, I always try and keep a positive attitude. And Your PMA. Yeah, say. man, PMA, positive mental attitude. Exactly. And that's, I think, it's been the big thing that's got me through this, is my yeah. driving force and, uh, and the positivity. Yeah. What about you? Exactly. Well, I guess we know. Obviously, you know, like tough times don't last, but tough people do. Mm. So you know things are always going to end. But as long as you're tough, you're going to always, pretty much always, like outweather yeah. uh, any kind of storm that comes along. Uh, with me, I was kind of surprised. Like I knew I was able to do this, but I didn't know the kind of the level of, you know, how the whole not needing food, the whole level of. Being able just to sustain, being able to sustain on, on nothing. I don't mean just uh, based on calories, sustaining on barely anything. What's being able just to sustain out here mentally is very difficult. I think that's a quite a hard achievement to do. And being able to put yourself through a very difficult situation and come out the other side, you know, stronger essentially. Mm, definitely. What about what about our friendship? Do you reckon, you reckon that's changed? Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's changed. Chills, I think, uh, yeah, in terms of it, you know, we want to get a uh, tattoo to uh, commemorate it, essentially. Just yeah. get a nice uh, commemoration yeah. uh, just to see that. Uh, yeah, in terms of our friendship, obviously now know how tough you are as a person. Yeah. Because uh, obviously before, you know, everyone knows you, you know, you like to go out, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Always out there for a laugh. But well, like really, there, there's there's some there's somebody ten times stronger yeah. inside you that you know n people didn't really know existed until you kind of put into that situation. Yeah. Nobody's gonna know, and obviously in the normal world, you're never gonna be put into that situation where you have to do that. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. But yeah, I think I think you know, in a way we've got naturally grown closer. Yeah. Through, throughout the whole experience, you know, from 
the planning stage right, right the way up to, to this. Mm. Um, you know, and I've seen seen a different side of Dan. You mm. know, it's like more of a leadership yeah. type type of Dan. Like you know, you you know when in our circle of friends, you're quite a sort of laid back yeah. kind of guy. You know, not really doesn't it, care about it, plans it, too much. Uh, doesn't care about plans. You know, sort of does ha- knows what he wants and does what he wants. Yeah. yeah. But you know, I'm definitely quite headstrong. Like, like at times, yeah. I can be headstrong yeah. and be like very uh, have a quick fuse in terms yeah. of just like being a bit snappy sometimes. Yeah. So I'm sorry about it, but yeah, that's yeah. something I can do sometimes. Uh, when, only in a situation like in the, you know, because this is a situation that I care about. Mm. But like you know, going out and stuff like that in mm. England or London, yeah. it's not really something which you're invested in. So it's not something which I, yeah. you know. I'm just, I'm just laid out, I'm like just laid back about to us outside of here. But like in here, there's just so much kind of going on and a lot of pressure to get things done. Because obviously it's taking a lot of planning, mm-hmm. a lot of money, and a lot of time. And yeah, like yeah. you want to kind of make a success out of what we do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what, what kind of things do you miss the most from home? From home. Yeah. Just um, football, yeah, big thing. Like you know, knowing how Southampton football club and doing, yeah, you know, that's food, obviously. Um, just the fact that you know, there's no variety here, is there? It's like you wake up, you survive. I've got my routine. I go down. I do. I collect the water. Mm. I spend most probably half hour by myself. Yeah. Down collecting the water, you know, just thinking about the day, thinking about the previous day, trying to get myself into that positive. Bit of personal time. Yeah, yeah, a bit of personal you know, time. You're on quarters of solitude. Yeah, and that's where I've done most of my thinking. And but you know, back at home there's a variety. You know, the fact that you know, if you want to sit there and watch a little bit of telly. It's input. Can, there's so much like yeah. yeah. There's so much like things come at you. You know, so many options of what to do. Yeah. You know. Things trying to grab, everything's trying to grab your attention at home, isn't it? Since like, the TV screaming out, the laptop screaming, screaming out, Wi-Fi, your phone, it's yeah. all kind of like screaming out at you. Essentially. Well, I do like the base, like you know, part of this, like you know, um, more basic living, you know, where money isn't a thing, like, you know, where yeah, freedom of yeah, you know, we're limited by what's around us, but we've got to free. Nobody's like. Uh, to wake up at this time or go to bed at this time. We go by however the night sky is. If it's getting dark, we go to bed. If it's getting light, we get up. Yeah. Uh, it's it's all freedom. going back to what, you know, we as human beings, like, when we first sort of, you know, progressed along evolution, mm. you know, what we were like um, as species. But, you know, it's, you know, I don't miss the sort of, you know, Spending money, I've actually enjoyed not spending money. Exactly. Um, and but I have missed, you know. You know, we missed like, but we're cut off. We're completely cut off. The only person I've spoken to for two weeks is you. Exactly. And I don't know what's going yeah. on in yeah. the world. Has something major happened? Has mm. something major happened in my own family life? Exactly. You know, have I missed? There'd be literally no way to know. You know, and that's. You know, that's. That's the thing is being this cut off, you know, for too long is it? I think it plays on your mental mind. Yeah. Yeah, and I think things. I think the out what happens in the outside world is playing on my mind. I just want to get back there, as yeah. in terms of you know having an interaction with all your friends and yeah. your family, that kind of stuff, just to kind of get back to like a normal routine. Because uh, you, you know we knew coming out here, we had a certain amount of days we could be out here. You yeah. know we flew out on the 28th. Uh, we leave on the 21st. Yeah. Obviously, we have to be out the uh, rain first. Uh, the day before, because you know the flights are the next day, so yeah. we need to be out there and just be able to uh, check ourselves back up and kind of uh, eat some food before we get on a flight. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like that stuff doesn't play my mind. A lot of it just you know the food and uh, mostly I think it's just the life in England of uh, being able just to sit down on a couch, not being bitten by bugs. Yeah, that would be nice. That'd be a bit of a dream, not having bugs biting you non-stop. Yeah, you know, and having, you know, some food, some variety in what, what you drink, you know, 
Yeah. Nice cold beer might be nice yeah. at the end of this. Um, yeah. Apart from that, no. Yeah. Have you been finding like the blackouts? I know we've both been. Uh, have you been finding out, finding the uh, blackouts? I know we've both been kind of facing those. How's that been affecting you? Um, so it's affected you a lot more than it's affected me. So yeah. I think that's because I've still got a lot, lot of body fat to burn. Yeah. Still got a lot of energy that that uh, you know. One thing in your body. Like, yeah. Got a lot more energy than you have. Yeah. But I, I get I get them every now and again. Um, yeah. But I just qu- try and keep hydrated. It's more you know how how you're coping with them. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's very definitely back to me in the sense that you know, I started off quite light and they get kind of get more and more uh, lost longer and uh, also kind of the audio the sounds of like the rain fires kind of like slowly mute down mute down mute down mute down and then as it kind of the blackout kind of fades back out into like normal vision mm-hmm. it kind of goes the audio kind of returns at that point this is obviously a new experience but like yeah the blackouts are a thing but they don't affect me other than within those you know five, ten seconds, you know, it's just a temporary thing that kind of happens, you deal with it, you carry on, but a lot of it is just from standing up, you know, too quickly, but you, you just got to give yourself a bit of time when you stand up, well, personally for me, uh, stand up and, uh, you know, take a bit of time to, to accept the blackout, and then, you know, continue, it doesn't affect me for the rest of the day, you know, there's no other symptoms, so obviously it's, it's just down to a lack of uh, energy, a lack of a lack of sustenance uh, that's what it's caused down to so it's not like an issue really it's a very it's a very easy symptom a minor symptom in my opinion uh, to the whole kind of lack of food situation uh, have you been finding like the bug bites oh mate um, the bug bites um, took a while to get used to in the first week mm. yeah and then they sort of died down, and then over the last few days, they've been crazy again, mm. man. You know, I don't know whether it's something to do with the weather, um, is it something, you know, we, we washed like properly yesterday, like down in the stream, is it something to do with that, is it to do with the shower, but last night, I think last night I got bitten more than I've been any other day mm. since I've been here, and it's, you know, there's always something to scratch, and I'm starting to come up with just... My body looks in pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Through through just scratching. Yeah. And but there's not a lot I can do about it. You know, we don't have any insect repellent. We don't yeah. have anything. Too easy, isn't it? If you took an yeah. insect repellent, that's that's not really survival, is it? You don't yeah. really carry that around like 24/7. Yeah. But it's something you kind of deal with. It's one of the most annoying things about it. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 made sleep a lot more difficult. You know. Yeah, it makes sleep very difficult. Um, but no, like. It's just something that you've had to kind of it's become everyday life a little bit. Mm. To be fair, you know you're gonna you're gonna get bitten, you're gonna get scratched, you know you're gonna end up scratching, you know. Yeah. And that's one of the, if, like as soon as we're out, I'm gonna look forward to you know the bites going away. Like I've just been bitten there, mm. um, you know. So I, I'm looking forward to getting away from the insects. To be fair. Oh yeah, that'd be fun. Uh, do you want to stand up and just uh, give a quick twirl of each other? Okay. Because as you can see, on his back, so visibly we had lots of bug bites, which come out as little like red marks. Uh, but now, more and more, as time's gone on, we've kind of got more kind of scarring and kind of, because uh, we've been kind of, you know, scratching our bug bites, which is ble- this is piercing our skin, making it scar up quite badly, as you can see right there, kind of all over, just turn it, go back around to the back, you know, lower back, the back's quite a big uh, area, because obviously it's a place where you can't reach the bugs as uh, well, I'm going to see how I look, how does it look? A lot of bites. So like, Dan's got a lot of bites, a lot of scratches, a lot of scars. You know, um, his arm. Show me your your, your, your left arm. Got no blood there from scratching too much. Yeah. Just like all over, just like blood in place. Like if you check. It's almost like it's almost 
No blood from scratching. Like an adult version of chicken pox. Exactly. We look like heroin addicts, essentially. Yeah. It's like, this is we kind of pierce our skin non-stop. But yeah, it's definitely a, a big effect. But yeah. So we, we, it's like bug bites, something which you have to deal with, but it's not pleasant and it's, it's constant. It makes it hard to sleep. But you know, uh, I find as well, uh, it's easier to sleep when, you, when you're able to kind of share a bit more body heat, I think. Yeah. Because I feel like the, the cold does keep you awake more and it makes it hard to get to sleep. Yeah. So like, sometimes when it gets to maybe, um, what I'm guessing is maybe two in the morning when it's probably at its coldest, you kind of have to like sleep a bit closer to each other. Yeah, like uh, back to back, you know. Exactly, just to be able to just like, get a bit more, just to get like that bit more body heat, just to get a, like, just a slight more warm. It's not going to change the world in warm, but it definitely makes a difference when you kind of can feel heat, uh, not just being generated from your own centre of your body, but maybe from somebody else's. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. It's a little bit, little bit comforting as well. Yeah. You know, because sometimes it can be raining. Yeah. Um, you know that there's still someone there, that's like next year I'll go through this sort of same pain. Yeah. Sweet. I think that covers that for now, mate. Let's get recording. Leave your audio on for now. Yeah. Let's see what else I think we need to do. That's it for now, mate. Yeah. Uh, I was going to do a vlog. I want to do a vlog over there. I quite like the location because it's kind of deep in rainforest. Yeah. You used to do a vlog as well. Yeah. So I find a good kind of background because personally I find, you know, the log yeah. that you have to climb over to get to the water. One of the first ones you have to climb over, like the big logs. Yeah. Uh, put the camera there and then it's facing that way. And I think the background is quite nice because you get like quite a good thickness to the uh, rainforest. I don't know if there's anywhere else here, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, but I think, yeah, that location over there is pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, the top of audio. I'm not going down there, to be fair. Do tomorrow. Yes. Cool. If, if, if the sun comes out, there's there still more filming to do, but it wouldn't. It's not like us sitting down doing conversations. Yeah. Uh, we'll do quite a few time lapses, that kind of stuff. I want to do some more filming tonight. Yeah. In the old night vision. I get your night vision out as well. That'd be yeah. sweet. Is that fully charged? Yeah. Does night vision work on that? Yeah. Yeah. So it wasn't working for a second, was it? No. Uh, I think it was. Okay. Like it doesn't work, I guess that's one more thing we'd have to take. What, the camera? It's only, it's only good for that, isn't it, Kayla? Yeah. All the music, I think, yes. You'll vlog personally, do you mind? Yeah, you can go do it as well. I've got the track of it, yeah.
but I would really need it to be a sunny day. There's more twigs to do. You could charge uh, the large GoPro backpack, the large battery GoPro. You want to move to a plus weight. I might see if I can just film my shit here. Okay. I'll try to if I can get good. Actually, I might, I might get you to hold the camera for me. I know I have mine on the one I've done on the one on the Yeah, I've been holding, I've had mine Wait, on the Would it still look good if you hold the camera for me and I'll just do it for that? Mm -hmm. Fine, wouldn't it? Okay, how long is it going to be? Yeah, five minutes. Five, five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Want to do it there? Yeah, I like that background of where those, those kind of those big leaves. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Far, far. I've already, done, I've already done one over there, so I just kind of stay back there. Sorry, mate, I turned that off. Did you? Yeah, basically, uh, yeah, man, sorry, man, I, I can change it on. on. Yeah, I think I'll just tell me how, how I would turn it back on. I'd have to do it myself, to I'd have to do it for your settings. I couldn't do it for me, man. I'll just turn it to, there's a monitor, there's a choice of either monitor and viewfinder. Just viewfinder or just monitor, and I've set yours to just monitor. So when you have it to monitor and viewfinder, mm -hmm. if, you, if you put anything over the viewfinder, it turns the monitor off. You know what I mean? Your thumb goes up, if your thumb goes anywhere near the viewfinder, it turns off the monitor, which is annoying. Yeah, no, like there, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Like, it's, I find it annoying in mine. Okay. So turn this off at some point. Before the trip. You found it? Yeah, it's not important, I just like for when I'm at home. But when I take pictures, I'll put Let's see where I can find it, I'll, I'll show you. Uh, it'd be not good for me to just like, try and find it. Yeah, it'd be, it's in the settings somewhere, isn't it? So. Yeah, I did feel a bit few drops there. Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, so. Unfortunately, because of the rain, I uh, kind of had a twig pile that we were going to use for fire. It's not gotten, gotten very wet. We did bring some of it in. 
Right, let me just start again. I need to ch change the focus. Is that a twig farm? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so unfortunately, uh, James, uh, our twig pile, which we were using uh, in order to uh, make a fire eventually, uh, when we do need it, has unfortunately kind of gotten wet. We did bring some of it in uh, to the shelter with us, uh, but we can only bring in so much before there's just no space, because, you know, it is quite cramped in there, isn't it? We're running out of space. Yeah, so yeah, the twig pile is uh, gotten, has, well, our twig pile has gotten wet. Uh, and we did bring some of it into our shelter with us, but as you know, you may know, so it's pretty cramped in our shelter. So it's gotten pretty wet. As you know, our twig pile uh, is in our shelter, making it a bit even more cramped than it already is. Uh, we're about maybe one more cramped night before I kind of kick you out, yeah. and you've got to uh, kind of What's b build maybe build a mansion or something like that. Yeah, man. It'd be better than this. this yeah. Anyway. But, you know, uh, hopefully the, uh, you know, the sun will come out another day and it will dry our pile again and we can use that in collection. Because essentially, inside the wood, it's going to be kind of dry. If you can get some wood shavings, and that's already part of our tinder done. So. We've got a big bag already collected. Yeah, we? full of it already. Full of leaves. Yeah. So, yeah, that's all kind of good for now. Right now, uh, well, during that thunderstorm, as you can see, a lot of the leaves on our shelter have been dying quite recently. Uh, so we're going to have to uh, find some more leaves. Unfortunately, we've kind of gotten most of the big leaves from this area, so we will have to venture out further to kind of th like find anything. But, uh, you know, we continue, you know. Thunderstorms always stop. Yep. So... So James, just gonna eat the inside of here. Yep. Let's see what it looks like. There we go. That's him. Inside there yep. is kind of edible to a degree. So I'm just gonna. Make my way to eating it. What, what are you hoping to get from this? Can... Minimal calories just to sustain myself. Minimal. Take brown. your seat, mate. You gonna eat the brown a bit? Nah, nah, avoid the brown, it's full of dirt. <laughs> sit on the other side. Yeah. Tasting too good. It's not as fresh as the other stuff I've had. This is kind of off the floor pretty much. That's bad. That might be gone off to be honest. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is gone off. I'm gonna give it another go. But mm. Tasting too fresh. It's got a slightly sweet taste to it. A little bit of flossy. Ah. <laughs> it's kind of completely jammed. Yeah. Uh-huh. I can take it out. It's like, hey, it's kind of jam between my teeth. There you are. Yes, it's not. Normally it tastes better than this, mm. but because we're running out of these, Let's try a little bit. smash them out there. It's not 
not tasting too fresh anymore. Kind of running out. When you get like the nice, the kind of like the honeycomb type stuff. If you can get just honeycomb, not too bad. But as you can see, pretty dirty. As you can see, it's all kind of going off. I'm just kind of eating the scraps. I'd say it tastes a little bit like cucumber. Yeah. It's quite sweet, isn't it? It's got a sweet, it's got a sweet taste to it. What do you think? It yeah, definitely like cucumber. What is it? I have no idea. What, whatever it is, it kind of comforting to kind of put something chewable. Still, uh, yet to have a bowel movement in this uh, rainforest. How about you? Yeah, I've had two. I've had two. How they been? Fun. How they been? Yeah, man. Fun. Fun experiences. But yeah, we're down to our scraps. To be honest, it's not mm. too good. <coughs> Can have to spit out when you once you get to the really fibrous parts. I kind of have to just like spit out the end part. A little bit better, doesn't it? Yeah, it's not thick, doesn't it? See what we can do with that. said that you know this is all we've uh, got left with it at the moment it isn't too good is it I'm more right now yeah I think it's not going to do a lot is it's it? not doing too well no but I need something inside of me you know we've got like a potentially a two day trek just to uh, get out of here yeah Anything that can kind of raise my levels, mm -hmm. it's going to be better than nothing.
What well, code are you? You got my hands again numb and that. Try to show body heat then and then I'll fix it. Your toes are warm, your hands will take care of themselves, aren't they? Hands still cold? Yeah, no, 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 no. Give me your hands. Find your hands into mine. No, 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 no. Put your hands together. Yeah. I find it in the same way. Just keep, just keep moving. Just keep, just wiggle them. My whole leg was pretty much for a while. My foot was very numb earlier. I just moved it. Mm. It stopped being there. How come you don't want to use the tool with it? Because it's not. It shouldn't be used to it. We've used it every day. Yeah, but it shouldn't be used too often. So we're not using it at all tonight? Well, what? It shouldn't have to be used. Well, I'm going to have to find my, my thing that I need my bag. I'm going to have to try and find my, uh, what's it? Do you want a bin bag? But that's what I wanted. Uh, Do you want a bin bag? Well, have you got a spare one? Yeah. Is it just your hands off? Cold? It's just my hands and my top. Then give me your hands, mate. You, you, you mm -hmm. put your hands in my hands for like mm -hmm. two seconds. Are you moving, moving around? Yeah, I'm doing that. I've been How can they be cold if you're moving them around? I've been putting them under my armpits as yeah. I'm trying to warm them up. Keep moving them around.
Is there now? Okay, who is it? It's just a thumb. It's not my actual hand, it's just my thumb. Okay, who is it? Um, I'm just trying to get some sleep to get my mind up here even more. I thought it was a sharp body heat. At the moment, you, you're like, you keep moving around, you know, you feel it, you feel it, you're cold. That's because I am cold. Yeah. I was trying to get closer to you. Your hands. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. One's under my armpit, so. Body heat, turn around and put my arm around you.
Ich bin in der. Out of bites. Yeah. The big or small ones? No, the red, the red ones. Day for temperature. Oh, right, for sure. I'm just, uh, I'm just always cold, mate. So. Really You're always cold. Not cold in the summer. No, when the sun's out, I'm not cold. So. Yeah. 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 I can try avoid using it, I can try avoid using it. Yeah, a lot of things help. Food helps, water helps. Yeah. 
Just see how hard you can push yourself. I think you can get that shelter, I think you can go harder. Feeling warm enough? Yep. Yeah, it's cold, that's it. 